Shalom, Ms. Pala. Welcome again to another insight into choice. And Vahera. Vahera. Right? And we know it's to make a choice. And for the past four teachings, we have din, uh, done an introspection on this word Chet. And how it relates to our choice. And we leap from that portion of scripture in John. John chapter 8 with the adulterous woman. However, I'm not going to go through or go over the um, portion of scripture tonight. You know, you can go back online and you can view it and you can get, um, you can get um, up to date with what the scripture is actually saying. However, at this particular point in time, what happened is that Yeshua is now communicating with this woman who is caught in adultery. And we all are familiar with the story. And whenever this story is told, is always focused on the woman caught in adultery. And that's the main emphasis because we live in a very sexual environment, a sexual um, culture. And sex is that which is innate in us all because we have this natural desire to do what? To procreate, to reproduce. However, our reproduction organ functions and fuels as a result of our desires. And if our desires are not met when they ought to be met, what happens? We tend to give in to these type of behaviors. And these type of behavior, where they come from? They come from our mind, our passion. Now, what I want to do, I want us to take us into a philosophical dialogue with Yeshua, the scribes and Pharisees, and all those who were there. Because this is a very interesting portion of scripture where now this concept and the idea that is being communicated to the woman, to the scribes and Pharisees, the oldest to the youngest, and all those who were there at the temple yard. So now we're seeing that they're in this place where they go in on occasion to pay sacrifice to Yodhe Wafe and to make atonement and to receive teachings and direction concerning Torah, concerning mitzvot. So what is literally going on here as Christ go through, as Yeshua went through this stooping down, writing on the floor, rising up, stooping down, and writing again. What did he write? What was so interesting that, that uh, what was so intriguing about what he wrote on the floor that caused every single person to dismiss, but at the same time, causing the woman to stand? without even uttering a word until she's asked a question. This 21st century that we live in, we see the whole advancements of education, knowledge, science, and all the like. However, all these things are to bring clarity towards truth because science in itself is not a truth in itself, science is theory. It's a frame structure in how you apprehend truth. This is why science is always known to be something that is changing because as we discover new concepts and ideas, we apply it to that which we know and we get rid of that which is common and we move on so we can gain some sort of clarity as to what has been said to what is being said and how we ought to approach any other ideas that may be discovered as we advance in technology and what have you. So now we're seeing something happening here with Yeshua and this woman. So now remember we said the head as he stooped on the ground, I believe he wrote the letter head. And what we said the letter head represents again? We said, what, what, is, what, what does it represent? We said it represents a 
a wall, a doorway, a pathway, a fence, and is either it builds and it makes a what? A division, a separation. It makes a distinction in out for against. You now are making a choice, but this choice that is being make, made now, it goes to the very what? Who can tell me? The very conscience of each individual that is right there with Moshiach. The question that is being asked is being focused on what? On the knowledge that they have concerning what? Torah. And what they were taught, they, taught, they were taught as Jews and as scribes and Pharisees, when Mashiach comes, he's going to bring what? Life. He's going to bring a rebuilding of all that they were expected, expecting in Jerusalem. He's going to bring about the fullness of all that which ought to be. Now, they were expecting a king like the governing nation. They were expecting a king like Caesar, like all those Nero and these kings that we know about who were very what? Strong-fisted. They, they were tyrant. And this type of uh, a system of government where one man control. So now, Yeshua is standing with the woman at the courtyard in the temple and he stooped down and as he stooped down he drew in the sand and as he drew this line he's telling them and he's bringing back to remembrance that each and every one of you here are accusing this woman of having what been found in adultery and remember we say that who is not there her husband is not there now her husband is not there but yet still the woman is caught in adultery what all of these men and they could relate with, with this woman. They could relate with the sexual activity that this woman was in. Involved in. They, they all can relate. And now what Yeshua is doing. He is bringing back to their remembrance. That just as how she's caught in adultery. You are responsible for her as her what? As her brother's keeper. Now he goes right back to. Genesis, when he said, when, he, when Yahweh told Abraham, Abraham, take your son on the eighth day and go and do what to him? Circumcise him. Why would you circumcise that young man? That young man needs to be circumcised in order to show him that his body is not his own. His body belongs to who? His wife. His body belongs to his wife. Not, we think when, when the circumcision is that the body belongs to Hashem, Yeshua, not at all. The body belongs to his wife. So now look at something. So we do, we're dealing with the body, the body, right? And it's the basa. The basa. And the basa, we know is the is the flesh so now the woman fleshes before him and yet still they are presenting this woman who was caught in adultery but an adult an adulterous woman cannot have adultery without what the flesh of a man and that which is on the man is what his penis and the penis have an eternal covenant with who with your hair wave here so now Every time a woman is found in adultery, is as a result of who? Is a res as a result of men not knowing who they are. An identity crisis is now being addressed. An, adult an identity crisis is now being focused upon each and every individual that is now accusing this woman of having what? Sexual relation with someone that is not her husband. But each one of these men here, from the oldest to the youngest, they have been taught in Torah. They understand. Now, just for a little backdrop, 
Remember that most people say that the, the Jews around that time in the first century, they weren't knowledgeable concerning what? Language. They, 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 they couldn't read. They were illiterate. I tend to disagree with that. Because we know around 600 AD, the Qumran scrolls, the um, Maserat, um, the Maserites, yeah, it's the, the Widat Qumran, the Maserites, what they did, the Maserites, what they did, they took the scroll and they wrote the scroll and they, they came up with what we call the Mickey Dots, the vowel punching because the language was oral and written. And because the language wasn't spoken as much, however, it was taught in the household and in synagogue. So what they did, they wrote the entire Tanakh and they put it in jars and they stored it in what? In what we call cave. So in, in 1946, right near the Jordanian River in the Dead Sea Scroll on the West Bank, right, what they found, they found with the shepherds and the archaeologists, they found the scrolls and we call it the Dead Sea Scrolls. So now we're looking at 1,346 years to date. After they store those, those scrolls, 600 years after the establishment of all these religions. So now we see that it took this scroll.